Normally when you're driving to the cruise port, you'll see the cruise ship appear over the horizon and it is such an exciting experience. That is not what happened on my last cruise. When we arrived at the cruise port, it was late at night, it was completely dark. We've been traveling for a little over 17 hours at that point and we still knew that there was one thing that could go wrong that would mean that we would be denied boarding. Despite that though, I was more excited for this cruise than any other. I'm from the UK and for the last couple of years I have dreamed of taking a Caribbean cruise. It's not a cheap option for me though normally as there is a nine hour flight that separates me from the Caribbean but I saw a very cheap cruise on board the MSC Sea View, so I decided to give it a go. MSC are definitely a controversial cruise line and in the past I've heard bad things said about the food, the service, the entertainment but I wanted to get on board for myself and to see if it would be worth the price that I paid. Normally if I want to work out the cost of a cruise that includes flights I'll take away the cost of the flights from the cost of the cruise and divide it by the number of nights. The cost of the flights from the UK to Barbados alone were over £700, which is around $900, but the cruise, including gratuities, drinks, transfers and flights, was only £580, which is $750. I genuinely do not know how this cruise was as cheap as it was. Effectively, either the flights were free or the cruise was free, but if I was to use my usual method of working out how much the cruise cost per night, it cost minus 17 pounds per day, which makes no sense, but it was a very, very, very cheap cruise. For the incredibly low price that I paid, I didn't go onto this cruise with massive expectations. I didn't know who else would be on the cruise. I didn't know how it would compare to other MSC cruises that I've taken. And I didn't know if everything would go to plan. There was a lot that could have gone wrong with this cruise. When we arrived at the cruise port in Barbados, we were checked in and then we were taken onto the ship. The cruise that we had booked was a seven night Southern Caribbean cruise round trip from Barbados. It was on board the ship that we had to have another COVID test done. We had done a PCR test before the flight, but we needed another lateral flow to get onto the cruise. I hoped that because I had tested negative in the morning that I would also test negative in the evening, but I do know people who tested negative in the UK, flew to Barbados, tested positive and had to quarantine in Barbados. I did not want that to happen, but I knew that that was a risk that I took when I booked this cruise. It probably was because of risks like this that the cruise I took was at such low capacity, but more about that later. Thankfully, we did our test, it was negative and our cruise began. It was at this point that I made the first un-Emma-like decision and I decided that I would order room service even though it wasn't free. If you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know I'm all about budget cruising. I'm all about saving money where you can when you cruise. But after 17 hours of flying, all we wanted was to have a shower and go to bed. So we decided that we would order room service. Before we could have our room service though, we had to do a safety drill, also called a muster drill. I was surprised to find out that we had to still physically go to the theatre to do our muster drills. On most cruises since the pandemic, you'll just watch the safety videos on your cabin TV or your phone, but we actually had to go to the theatre, physically go to the theatre, just like the olden days. There weren't many of us there in the theatre because Barbados wasn't the main embarkation port of this cruise. MSC are different from most other cruise lines in the way that their itineraries work. On an MSC cruise, you can usually get on at multiple different ports, which means that there isn't one big embarkation and one big disembarkation day. The room service pizza was great and it was worth every one of the 11 euros that I spent on it. This pizza is the same pizza that you can get in the buffet. MSC freshly make lots of pizza on board and their buffet pizza section is open something like 20 hours a day. If you like pizza, you'll probably like an MSC cruise. We booked the cheapest cabin on the entire ship and we were assigned cabin 11105. The cabin was very clean, it was very functional, it felt very spacious because there wasn't too much stuff in there. I liked the USB by my bed, I liked the do not disturb buttons inside the room and I liked the fact that the TV actually swung around so that you could watch TV in bed. I did find a rather interesting adult section on the TV which I've never found on a cruise before. I will let you read these titles but it's safe to say I did not click on any of these videos. After our long journey we had the best sleep ever. The beds were so comfortable and I had my daylight alarm clock to wake us up. When we woke up we had that exciting feeling that you normally get on embarkation day. So excited to explore the ship. We noticed that on our cruise cards it said we had been assigned late dining. We did one early dining and we did request this before the cruise so we decided that we would try and change this if we could. Late dining is 9pm on an MSC cruise 
and that is way later than I normally eat dinner. The cruise line always has the right to say no when it comes to changing your dining time, but I've never had any cruise line say no. I've always been able to change it if I wanted to. I have cruised with MSC before on the Opera, Meraviglia and Virtuosa, but those ships are completely different to the MSC Seaview. It was immediately obvious that she was designed for warm weather. She doesn't have the kind of central street that the Meraviglia and the Virtuosa do, but she has a huge pool deck, an inside pool, a smaller pool, lots of water slides. It's a very outside focused ship. At the back of the ship, there is a walkway called the Bridge of Sighs. I thought it was fun. I was sitting there, I was laying there, I thought it was hilarious. But some people do not like this and I understand why. There is a very sparkly atrium on the MSC Sea View. It is split over multiple levels and there are so many bars and lounges. You'll also find things on the MSC Sea View, like a bowling alley, like a 4D cinema, you name it. Things that you never thought would be on a cruise ship, like an F1 simulator, they have it on the MSC Sea View. Your weekly piece of cruise trivia is that each stair on these sparkly staircases costs around £10,000, which is around $13,000, because they're made of Swarovski crystals. There are six staircases just in the atrium of the MSC Seaview, so across the entire fleet, that is a lot of crystals. Usually on MSC cruises, you'll find everything is done in multiple languages. You'll find people who speak English, Italian, Spanish, French, German, you name it, you usually find that language spoken on an MSC cruise. Before this cruise, I'd only cruise with MSC in Europe, so I was interested to see how this would be different cruising with MSC in the Caribbean. It was almost immediately that we started to notice how quiet this ship was. I've taken quite a few cruises since the pandemic. Most of them have been at reduced capacity, but this is the first time I've noticed it quite as much as I did on this cruise. I did actually go to the reception desk to ask how many passengers were on board, and I was told that there were 1,200 passengers on board out of a maximum capacity of 5,119. This meant that the cruise was only at 23% capacity. I'm pretty sure that the capacity did increase a bit as the cruise went on and more guests embarked in different ports, but if we wanted to have 20 seats outside, we could have done that without any trouble. We decided not to upgrade to a balcony cabin for this cruise, and I have no regrets about that. Because of the reduced capacity, there was always so many places that we could sit, and we would often sit out on the promenade deck right by the buffet. Because of the reduced capacity, the buffet was actually closed on one side. I don't know why, but I don't think anybody realised that there was another side with all of this seating on it. So we basically just made that whole side of the cruise ship our own private balcony. The only bad thing was that there wasn't any waiter service there because this side of the ship was closed, but we would just walk down to the bar, get a drink and take it back to our huge virtual private balcony. I honestly just couldn't believe it because if you wanted to pay for this much space per person, you'd have to cruise on a very luxurious cruise line and pay a very, very luxurious price, at least 10, 50 times the price of what we paid for this cruise. We did have a drinks package included in our cruise and it was the highest drinks package. I would never normally buy that higher drinks package. I just don't drink enough to make back the cost of it. I'm more of a soda package kind of girl, but because I had that drinks package, we tried all kinds of weird and wonderful cocktails. The cost of that drinks package, if we were to buy it, was almost the cost of my entire cruise. So you could look at it that basically I bought a drinks package and I got a free cruise plus free flights plus free transfers plus free everything else. Crazy, crazy, crazy. We were enjoying the ship being quiet, but we did wonder how this would affect the rest of the cruise. I'm somebody who likes to go to listen to live music. I like to go to the game shows, but I have no desire to ever be part of a game show. So I hope that there would be enough people there that it wouldn't be awkward or strange and that everything would kind of just carry on as normal. At this point, we didn't really have any plans about what we wanted to do in port. I did buy an internet package on board, mostly so that I could keep in contact with you, but also so that I could do some research. I bought the higher internet package, which was around £15 per day, and it worked very well during this cruise, probably again due to the reduced capacity, there were not so many people using it. We hadn't booked any excursions before the cruise, but we were hoping to do some. Being a budget cruiser, I'm not normally a huge fan of doing cruise line organised excursions, if I can do something cheaper, but we'd flown over 4,000 miles to get to the Southern Caribbean, so I wanted to see as much of the islands as I could, and the cruise line excursions really weren't that expensive. 
Each half day tour that we booked was around £50, which is just less than $70. If you were to do a similar tour with Norwegian, with Royal Caribbean, with one of the big American cruise lines, you're looking at double the price. MSC's excursions are pretty good, I think. A friend of mine, Tommy, from the Always Be Booked Cruise podcast was on a very similar cruise to us, just one port ahead. He said that he would leave me a gift in a port to find. So I knew that that was something I had to do. I had to do this kind of scavenger hunt, but I didn't have actual excursions booked at this time. Looking at the MSC app and looking at the excursions, there was no book button, which did make me very, very nervous. We decided to go to the excursion desk though, and they said that there was plenty of space on the excursions. And the problem was that my credit card wasn't properly linked to my app. Because we had a drinks package and we weren't spending money, we didn't know that we didn't really have a card linked. I had linked it before the cruise, but I needed to do it again on board. So we did that at one of these machines. It was all very easy. And from that point, we had the power to to book things. For that little bit of time though, where I saw that I couldn't book anything, I was a little bit worried. I have to say in the past, I've not been a big fan of MSC's theatre entertainment. I would go as far as to say it is probably my least favourite of all the cruise lines I've cruised with. Because of the multiple languages that happen on an MSC cruise, often the shows are pretty abstract. I think abstract is the word. And I often come out of the theatre shows thinking, what on earth was that? I'm happy to report that the shows that we saw on this MSC cruise were better than any other MSC cruise that I've ever been on before. And there were like 20 people in the production. I could not believe how many people were singing and dancing and doing all kinds of strange things. There wasn't a single show on this cruise that couldn't have been on another cruise line. I think if you took some of the entertainment with MSC from 10 or so years ago and you tried to put it on a Norwegian cruise or a P&O cruise, people would have had a few things to say about it. There would be one person who was just randomly dressed as a sheep and you just have to expect that on an MSC cruise. But every show that we saw on this cruise was so much better than anything I've seen on an MSC cruise in the past. So well done MSC, keep it up, please, I like it. By this point in the day, we were getting pretty hungry, so we decided to go to the main dining room for lunch. I asked here if I could change our dining time from late to early, and that was not a problem at all. They just crossed out what was on my card and wrote down the new table and the new dining time. We always found the crew on board to be really friendly and really helpful. We chatted to the crew on this cruise more than we normally would because they had more time because of the reduced capacity. Shout out to Eric if you are watching this. At one point we were sat in the atrium, we wanted a drink, we sat down and two waiters actually came at us from two different sides to take our order because they were just there and they were just available because there weren't so many passengers. If you wanted to pay for that level of service on another cruise, you're going to be paying a lot. We really lucked out with the reduced capacity. I have been on MSC cruises in the past where the crew definitely were busy and they definitely were stressed. I've never had any bad service, I've never had anybody be rude to me on an MSC cruise, but you could tell that the crew were really quite busy. I think a lot of the time you get out of an interaction with the crew what you put in. If you're polite and if you're friendly, the crew will be polite and friendly back to you. If you're there and you're acting like a prat, I think sometimes on MSC they're very busy, they don't have the time to deal with you, and fair enough. To be quite honest, fair enough. Over the years, MSC have had a lot of criticism when it comes to their food, and I took my first MSC cruise in 2012. In 2012, the food wasn't fantastic, the food portions were pretty small, and it wasn't always particularly hot from memory. I took another MSC cruise in 2018, and the food wasn't anything amazing, but it wasn't terrible. I then invited some of my friends to take their first cruise with me in 2019 on MSC, and they absolutely loved it. The food definitely wasn't as good as cruise lines like Royal Caribbean or Princess, but we hadn't paid a Royal Caribbean or Princess price for the cruise. There were six of us on that MSC cruise in 2019 and none of us ever had any food complaints. I don't remember anything as being particularly amazing, but there was never anything wrong with it. The food that we had on this MSC cruise though was better by far than any MSC food that I've had in the past. The food definitely can be hit and miss, but there's certain things that MSC do really well. If you like pasta, they freshly make all of their own pasta. If you like pizza, if you like vegetables, if you like bread, they do those things very well. We mostly ate in the main dining room for our dinner, but we also went to the buffet every single day. And we did have one speciality meal in a speciality restaurant that was actually free because of my loyalty status, but more about that later. You can see photos of every single thing I ate on this cruise, along with the menus on my website. Don't look at that though. If you are hungry, it made me incredibly hungry writing this post. I miss that lasagna, the lasagna portofino. Mwah. Lovely. 
Our cruise visited Dominica, Antigua, the British Virgin Islands and St. Martin. Our first excursion in Antigua, it took us around the island on a interesting bus, let's say. It was a cross between a bus and a roller coaster because you had to hold on really, really tight. We went around these very tight corners at very fast speeds. Definitely not for the faint hearted, but it was a lot of fun. The tour dropped us off on this lovely piece of beach and here I did another very un-Emma-like thing and I paid $5 to use an umbrella, which was well worth it. I'm from the UK, we are not used to the sun and sun protection I think is worth $5. And lots and lots of sun cream or sunscreen if you're from the US. That's not your Britishism of the week, but I think that is one. It was here that I found my gift that my friend Tommy had left me. It was a t-shirt and I was so happy that this all worked out. I've known Tommy for years, I've talked to him on his podcast before for, but we've never physically been in the same place at the same time and this is as close as we've ever been. I'm so glad that it did work out and I have bought the t-shirt back now to the UK. We were docked next to the Queen Mary 2 in Antigua, which was quite a coincidence considering the last ship that I was on was the Queen Mary 2. I love my cruise with Cunard, I love my MSC cruise, but they are worlds apart on the cruising scale. The MSC Sea View actually has two buffets, one on deck 7 and one on deck 16. Due to the reduced capacity, the buffet on deck 16 was closed, but the buffet on deck 7 was almost always open. This is as close as I got to that mysterious buffet on deck 16, a sneak peek as I walked by. Most of the food in the grill section was cooked freshly for you so they had example food here so that you could see what you were ordering. It was very useful for people who didn't really speak much English because they could kind of point at what they wanted, count how many on their fingers and they'd end up with what they actually wanted. The buffet did feel like a normal buffet. You could always get a seat but it did sometimes feel quite lively in there especially when we picked up other people as the cruise went on but really that's kind of the point of a buffet and I quite like that there were other people there ahead of me because the food is still served to you by the crew so having a few other people in the queue ahead of you means that you can look at what you want before you get to the front. One of my favorite things that I found on this entire cruise was this thing. It's kind of like a sugared pineapple pizza. I'm not really sure but it's definitely a dessert. Think of it like a big triangle donut and it was very good. I could have eaten a full-size pizza just of this but I don't know what it is and that's what's good about a cruise. You get to try all kinds of things that just look interesting. Half of the buffet was always closed and because of the reduced capacity that did make sense. I did wonder if the same sort of thing would happen in the rest of the ship. Would they close off half the bars? Would they close half the lounges? But they never seemed to do that. We never found anything that was closed. Not more than normal. Of course sometimes some things do close on cruises but everything kind of just went on as normal. The live music would keep playing even if there was only a couple of people in there. The dance classes would go on. Sometimes they would do a dance class and nobody would be there other than the instructor. But they would keep going, which I thought was really, really nice. So if you wanted to go to any of these things, they still were happening. We also watched a presentation about the behind the scenes things that happen on a cruise ship, which of course is very interesting for me. A lot of it I knew from my research. I do a lot of research from my website. But it was nice to hear somebody who really knew what they were talking about tell me the things that I thought I knew to kind of cement some of that knowledge. MSC were very hot on mask wearing during this cruise and when we were watching the theatre shows there would be at least two, sometimes four crew members stood in the corners of the theatre making sure that everybody kept their masks on. On the cruise you had to wear a mask pretty much all of the time unless you were sat down at a table. If you were sat down at a table in a bar or you were eating in a restaurant you didn't have to wear your mask but you had to wear your mask in the theatre and if you did take it down for any reason they would come and they would tell you to put your mask back on. Covid restrictions are still taken very seriously on the islands that we visited. There are no restrictions left here in the UK but when you travel you have to follow the rules of the places that you're going to and Covid is still taken very seriously in the places that we visited. Our next port stop was in Tortola in the British Virgin Islands and we had a bus that had actual sides this time. On the bus we were given sugar cane to chew on, we were given rum to drink and it was quite an interesting experience. We covered a lot of ground during the excursion and we learned a lot about the history of the island, most of which I had no idea about before. The roads were really quite bumpy and our tour guide was lovely so she would be showing us things on her phone, she would be showing us maps and I get really quite travel sick. I can't really look within a bus or within a 
car for more than a few seconds without feeling unwell. So I did my best to kind of look like I was still paying attention. I was, but without making myself feel travel sick. Made more difficult, I think, by the fact we were drinking rum and eating sugar cane during the tour. But our guide was absolutely lovely and it was so nice to hear from a local who knew everything. Everything we asked her, she knew the answer to. On this cruise, although we booked excursions through MSC, they're run entirely by third parties. You won't have any sort of MSC crew member with you on the cruise. MSC just collect you and post you off on the excursion. It was here that we docked next to the Celebrity Millennium and the Celebrity Millennium is a pretty big ship in her own right. But next to the MSC Sea View, she looked tiny. We would be looking down and we would be seeing everybody wander around the pool, which was cool. We met people on board who were staying on board for a month or two months just because it was so cheap. And it still is that cheap. If you can go on this cruise really, really soon, it's not much more expensive than what I paid. If you're interested in the more practical side of how to actually cruise as cheaply as I do, I have everything that you need in my step-by-step -step video course. It's called How to Cruise for Less. Check it out after this video. It's up here on the MSC Sea View that you will find the Sea View's famous zip line. The zip line wasn't running during our cruise and that is in small print on the MSC website. I didn't read that before our cruise though, so I was always expecting to see somebody flying overhead. When you're on an MSC cruise and you want to find out information about anything, the first place that you go to is the MSC app. In there, you can see your daily schedule, you can see what you've booked, you can see your excursions, you can see when things are open, and you can see the menus ahead of time, which I absolutely love. I don't think at any point during this cruise, I went to a restaurant without having already decided what I was going to order. The MSC app worked really well during our cruise. They haven't overcomplicated it, but they do have the basic things right. My last cruises were with Cunard and with P&O, and the thing that I found annoying about their apps was that it missed the daily schedule, which is really what I want within an app. MSC have that, they have lots more, and I never had any problems with it. It's the first time I think I've not had problems with a cruise lines app. One thing that MSC do better than other cruise lines is their status match program. If you have a loyalty status with a different cruise line or with some hotel, Hotels, MSC will match that and you will get the freebies and you will get the perks even if you've never cruised with MSC before. I matched my loyalty status from NCL to MSC and now every time I take an MSC cruise I get all kinds of free things and it is brilliant. I think I enjoy those things more because they are free and it doesn't really feel like I've built up the loyalty with MSC but who am I to argue I'm going to accept the free food and the free things. I love this chocolate chip, but it is almost impossible to eat. In the past, I've brought it home, put it in a bag and just tried to smash it to pieces. I've never found a knife that manages to cut through this. It is solid, solid chocolate. I normally end up just kind of chewing on one end as a way to eat it. It's the only way I've found to actually eat this other than melting it down. I probably look like a squirrel, but it's tasty. It's just very, very difficult to eat. I think it would be much better if it was hollow, if it was like an Easter egg, like a ship shaped Easter egg that will be very nice your Britishism of the week is Easter eggs and I don't think other countries realize just how seriously we take our Easter eggs here they are big hollow chocolate eggs and we have a full aisle in the supermarket dedicated to them around Easter apparently the average child will eat eight Easter eggs over Easter averaging a thousand calories per egg and I've definitely done more than that some Easters they are fantastic it tastes so much better in egg form but it's got to be a proper Cadbury's dairy milk chocolate Easter egg you can't beat them. As the cruise went on I realized that I hadn't heard anything about the free speciality meal that I'm entitled to because of my loyalty status so I decided to go to the speciality restaurant section of the ship and ask if I could book and ask if I could use my status and they said yes it was fine and I booked my dinner but I'm so glad that I proactively went and did that or I would have missed out on it so make sure you know what you're entitled to if you do have a loyalty status and make sure you get that free food. Don't miss out on free food. The speciality restaurants were located up and behind that second buffet which was closed, which means that you could easily go on a week-long sea view cruise and not know that any of those speciality restaurants were there. On most of the MSC cruise ships, the speciality restaurants are right down in the main street so that you see them all of the time. I did find it a bit strange that on sea view the speciality restaurants were really out of the way, but that did cut down on the amount of upselling that we experienced. On a few of the MSC cruises that I've taken in the past, I have found the upselling on speciality dining and drinks packages to be quite intense. Luckily, we didn't really experience any of that on this cruise because we never walked past the speciality restaurants and we already had the highest drinks package, so nobody could upsell us. We were already at the top. 
I did find, as I do with most cruises, that the people who work in the spa were out and very keen to get people to come into the spa for treatments. Probably they were a bit bored because of the reduced capacity, but I normally say no thank you and then I very politely run in the opposite direction. I'm not a spa treatment kind of person on a cruise. When we docked in St. Martin, more people boarded the cruise and I'm pretty sure the capacity was higher than 23% from that point onwards. It was never busy, never ever busy. I took this photo because this was the most people I ever seen in one place during the cruise but it definitely felt busier in certain areas like the buffet and like the theatre. There was a man in the theatre who every night would sit in the front row, he would sit in the same seat and after every single song he would stand up and he would clap. It was absolutely the sweetest thing and I think everybody needs that kind of person in their life, somebody who's a cheerleader who is just there at the front every single time. It was so sweet. It was a little bit strange having people embarking and disembarking the cruise on all kinds of days. It didn't normally make a big difference to us. We would just see the suitcases out by the door and think, oh, I'm glad that's not me. But sometimes when other guests would embark, they would announce everything about the safety drill into all of the cabins and all of the areas on the ship. And we'd already done our safety drill, so it wasn't relevant to us. And I understand how people do find that a bit annoying. We knew that we didn't have to go again. We'd already been to a safety drill, but sometimes people don't know that and it can be a bit confusing. That's definitely one of the downsides of having guests embark and disembark on all kinds of days, but one of the main perks of it was that we actually got to stay on till 3 p.m. on disembarkation day. We got to stay in our cabin until midday and our drinks packages worked for that full day. We could eat, we could drink, and we could make the most out of being on the ship. That may not happen if the ship wasn't at such reduced capacity, but we had a night flight organized through MSC, so I thought it was very nice that they let us stay on the ship for the day rather than just leaving us in the airport. There wasn't much to do in the airport and I would much prefer to be on the ship getting my last pieces of sun before I came back to the UK. MSC are a very casual cruise line and we did wear shorts for most of the cruise. They do have one kind of dress to impress, gala or formal night in the loosest, the loosest way you can use the word formal. But the dress code for that night is just a suggestion. I don't think I actually ever saw anything written down about the dress code. It just basically said if you'd like to dress up tonight's the night you can do it. If not, no worries. And that's kind of an MSC cruise. It's all just relaxed and it's all about fun. You'll find lots of families on there, lots of younger people. It was completely the opposite of my last cruise on Cunard. And given the fact that we were in the Caribbean and it was warm, I was happy not to have to put on any kind of formal wear. That is what is great about cruising though. There is so much variety between the different cruise lines. In terms of formality, Cunard are right at the top, MSC almost at the bottom, and there is everything in between. To find out how I got on on the formal Cunard cruise, watch this video next. You'll be able to see the differences between this Cunard cruise and this MSC cruise within a couple of seconds. They are complete opposites when it comes to cruising. Watch this video next.